Okay, guys, in this screencast, we're going to have a look at uh, basically the processes of transcription and translation. We're going to look at how we move from the code of DNA to RNA and eventually put the amino acids in the right order. And we're going to have a look at a, um, a table of amino acids and, um, and codons and look at how we might use that. So first off, let's have a look at strand of DNA here. So our molecule of DNA is made of two strands, uh, made of our four nucleotides, uh, thymine, cytosine, adenine, and guanine. And they, these all appear in a whole variety of orders, and this order is very, very, very specific. So let's have a look at an example here. And you can imagine this strand going on for um, you know, even thousands of, thousands of nucleotides. The other strand of the DNA is complementary with the same four nucleotides, um, A going with T and G going with C, good couples always together. So we can write these in, an A matching up to the T, T matching up to the A, a G matching up to the C, a C with a G. And along the line we go, matching up our complementary strand. So that's our DNA molecule. Now what we're going to consider next is our creation of our RNA molecule and it's actually a messenger RNA molecule which we're going to talk about. And the difference between um, um, DNA and RNA, well RNA is single strand, um, it also has a different sort of sugar, it has a ribose sugar instead of the deoxyribose sugar, um, and it has uracil instead of the thymine. Um, what, the messenger RNA isn't going to code the whole DNA molecule, it's going to code uh, a small section maybe um, a couple thousand molecules there, um, of one of the strands. So let's just have a look, uh, let's code a section of the bottom strand into RNA. And this process again is called transcription. So let's have a look. First off, T, well that would be complementary to A. The next one, A, normally in DNA it would be complementary to T, but we don't have thymine in RNA, so it's complementary to U. C is complementary to G. G is complementary to C. To C. To C. To G. And we go along the line, similar sort of process. And there we have it. That's our, that's our strand of messenger RNA. Uh, complementary to a section of DNA. Um, Use instead of T's. In the process of transcription. The next thing we're going to consider is, is the process of translation. And translation is coding uh, the messenger RNA into the sequence of amino acids. So let's have a little look at this first before we get started. First off, we have 20 different amino acids that make up proteins, and we need to have a look at how we get the, uh, enough codes to do that. If we only used one base to create those codes, a could code for one protein, U for another, C for another, G for another. We'd, we'd only get um, enough codes for four, pro, for four amino acids, and that's not going to be enough. We need to be able to work with 20 amino acids to create proteins. If we use a two-base code, we could get a few more combinations, but we're not going to get the 20 combinations we need. So what we're going to find is we work with a, what's called a triplet code or a codon, uh, which uses three bases. So we're going to have 64 different combinations or different codons that we can have, um, but it also means we're going to have extras. So what we're going to have is we're going to have some that code for the same amino acids. And to work out which codon um, or triplet code codes for a particular amino acid, we often use a table that looks something like this, where the, where the first base is displayed on one side, the second base, and then the third base. So let's consider a couple of amino acids. First off, let's consider U, A, G. And let's, let's have a look at what that codes for. So we look up the first letter U in the table. Here it is, that's the first base. The second one, we move along the U line till we reach A. And these are all the ones that start with UA. And the one we're looking for is UAG. Okay, and this is G along this bottom line here. So 
first column we choose the U row, the A column, and which of the four it is is U A G. And this one here is actually a stop code on. There's a the three which code for stopping the um, translation. Um, there's also one that the A U G which is used to start that. Let's have a look at another one. A A G. We look this up on our table. First letter A. First letter, so it's going to be somewhere along this A row. A is the second letter, so we go across to the A column. And it's A, A, G, following G down here on the bottom line. And A, A, G codes for an amino acid with, with, the, with the symbol L, Y, S. Now let's have a look at this process in our example. So if we've got a strand of messenger RNA here. Uh, that's what's going to go to the ribosome, to the ribosomal RNA, the rRNA. Um, and these, this code is going to be read in triplets. Okay. And each of these three bases is going to code for a particular amino acid. Um, let's look up AUG on our table. Again, same process. A, U, G. And this is one we're probably a little bit familiar with already. And it's going to code for an amino acid uh, with the symbol MET. And that's actually the start uh, codon. The next one, CCC. C, C, C. It's going to code for an amino acid with the symbol pro. G A U G A U coding for okay and there we have a, a sequence of amino acids and if you can imagine each of these amino acids being brought down to the ribosome by the tra transfer RNA the messenger RNA uh, puts them in order and at the ribosome they're joined by these these peptide bonds making up polypeptide or, or protein. Okay. And this is what's making our primary structure of our protein. So just to uh, so just to uh, review two important terms. First one, the coding of the DNA to the RNA, we call that transcription. The coding of the RNA to the amino acids and we can actually work out the amino acids that are produced from a strand of RNA um, using our table of codons and amino acids that we see there. Hopefully that's helped you decode the mysteries of going from DNA to proteins. Enjoy!